Hey, Lorcan Rose here. Time for a party pooper daily rant. Uh, so someone sent me a link to uh, some congressman doofus head saying stuff on the House floor. Um, and he, uh, oh, he represents the, I can't believe I just said it. He pretends to represent the piece of dirt upon which the Oregon standoff thing is going on. Um, so he, I know lots of people were all happy and gung ho. And like, this is so awesome that he's saying these things. So I'm going to be a total party pooper. He's pointing out that the, the, the BLM is, um, doing nasty things, doing stupid things that the, the sentencing of these two guys for doing like uh, controlled fires, one of which got a little bit out of control and burned some government land. Um, and the fact that they were sentenced to five years under an anti-terrorism statute is totally unjust and bogus. Um, and he's talking about how the the BLM and the, the executive branch doesn't care what the people think. And they, they'll do studies and ask for public input. And all the ranchers and everybody there says, we don't want you to do this thing. And then they do that thing anyway because they don't give a crap. Um, and so they, he's basically saying... The federal agencies are, are abusive and nasty and stupid and don't care what the people want and are harming the people's interests. And um, oh, and he said they're not even obeying the law. Um, now he, there, I forget the the specifics, but he talked about some law having to do with the BLM that he actually wrote, and then the BLM was misapplying it and, and overstepping and, and overreaching all over the place. And he went to them and was arguing with the bureaucrats. And they were saying, we don't think that's the intent of the law. He's saying, I wrote the stupid thing. <laughs> I know what the intent of, well, we disagree. And so I found it a little bit funny that here's this congressman basically saying, well, we can't make the executive branch agencies follow the laws we wrote. Like, all right, okay, why do you just admit that you're totally worthless then? Because <laughs> you're whining at you, you're basically, they're your thugs and you're whining at them that they won't do what you want, which, you know, is half hilarious. And it's half him putting on a show to try to look like he's the, the, the brave representer of the people and give me a freaking break. So, but lots of people are rah, rah, rah. Yay, he's, he's there on the House floor condemning the BLM and saying this is ridiculous and this is unfair and this is unjust and this is illegal and all these things. And the thing I noticed that he said, being the, the skeptical, cynical, anti-government bastard that I am, was he said, ah, you know, I want to make it clear that I don't support what they did taking over that thing. That, that's going too far. Um, now I don't, I don't support what they did for completely tactical reasons. Um, but not that it's immoral to seize an empty building used by bureaucrats. Like, I don't care. <laughs> the bureaucrats don't own it. The government doesn't rightfully own anything, but he threw that in a couple times in his talk. Like this is horrible. This is unjust. Oh, this is something must be done, but actually disobeying is going too far. So I'm not in favor of that. I'm not at all. I want to make it clear. I'm not saying what they did was okay. So for all the rah, rah, rah that people are giving, hardly anybody seemed to notice that what he basically said is, this is a grave injustice and you should just shut up and put up with it. Or you can bitch about it and then put up with it. But it's going too far to actually disobey and resist. Even when the agencies are acting illegally, which he said they were, that they're not... They're acting outside of the law, even when they're misapplying the law, which he said they were, even when the result is totally unjust, which he said it was. So the real message of, it, of this supposedly pro-freedom speech is they're abusing you and mistreating you, and you should just basically put up with it. Uh, you can whine about it, and then you can come beg us to do something about it. But we have proper channels. The proper channels is you grovel to us kneel at our feet and beg for mercy, and then you put up with whatever happens to you. That was the actual message. You know, that's not what most people heard because most people are like, yay, he's, he's criticizing the BLM and he's criticizing the Obama administration. 
criticizing all these acts of injustice. Yeah, and did you notice at the end of that, he said, just put up with it anyway. Don't disobey, don't resist. So it's totally pro-slavery propaganda disguised as, I'm fighting for you, I'm on your side. Really, you're fighting for me and then telling me to just put up with being treated like crap. That's an awesome advocate you are. And, and the thing is that, that individual example, kind of who cares, it's trivial, but it's, it's an example of a gigantic pattern that's been going on forever since before the Constitution was even ratified, is you get these opportunistic politicians who say, well, we have to do things within the law. There's proper procedure for doing this. And as it happens, proper procedure includes giving me lots of power and then you come whine to me to do stuff on your behalf. So, for example, there's that congressman in Oregon. What would he be? Why would he matter at all? Why would anybody pay him? Why would anyone give a shit what he thinks if the people of Oregon told the BLM, piss off or we're just going to freaking shoot you. We've been ranching here forever. If you declare it's your land, we don't care. If you come here and try to kick us off, we're just going to freaking shoot you. Of what use would a quote unquote representative be to them? None. The purpose of the representative is to keep them enslaved by making them think they have some say in the, in the process. By making them think that petitioning and whining and, and, you know, spelling out their grievances is going to do any good. Like we have this procedure whereby you can smash your head against this wall forever and accomplish nothing, but that's what we want you to do. Because if you actually resist, why the hell would you need politicians? If you're going to actually disobey and resist the ruling class, you don't need a politician for that. In fact, the politicians then obviously become your enemies. But that's basically, I mean, the, the Constitution itself, and even before that, the, you know, the revolution happened. Before it even happened, there were politicians you know, vying for a position where they could end up with power for themselves. And they're pretending, we're going to act on your behalf. We'll represent you. We'll be good. We'll be pro-freedom. And if the goal is a free society where without a ruling class, who the hell needs any of them? Nobody. Nobody freaking needs a politician representing them in a stateless society. It, that doesn't mean anything. But, you know, even during the revolution, there were people like trying to position themselves so that, hey, whoever wins, I'll be in a good position on the other side. You know, but this politicians have been doing this for literally thousands of years. And to, to, to still not recognize the pattern is just ridiculous. Well, we'll sort of play both sides of the fence and then, you know, if this happens to win out, then we'll cash in this way. And if that happens to win out, then we'll go the other way. And, and either way, we play the game to empower ourselves. We don't actually have any principles. We don't give a crap about anything except ourselves. But we can give a good speech and dupe the people into empowering us because we made them think that we give a crap about them and made the th them think that we're fighting for them. And th this bozo congressman is like, oh, I'm fighting for you. Uh, no, you're freaking not. You're fighting for yourself. You're in that office fighting for yourself. If you were fighting for them, your speech would have said, when they show up on your land, just shoot the bastards. Goodbye. Because that would actually end the injustice instead of, whining about the injustice and then telling people to put up with it. That's not you representing them. That's you selling them out. And it happens to remind me of what defense attorneys constantly do. Um, and uh, not even just public defenders, which, you know, you would expect that from a public defender. Hey, you work for the government that's prosecuting me. Gee, no conflict of interest there. You work for the enemy, and golly gee, now you're trying to talk me into taking a plea bargain. Well, even normal defense attorneys do that because it makes less work for them and they still get money. If they say, all right, well, just give up. You know, just, just bow and kiss the ring and beg for their mercy and just give up. Admit you're evil and bad and let them do something not quite as nasty to you as what they wanted to do, and we'll pretend that's a win. 
Um, and that's why I, <laughs> when Tessa, when, when Tessa and my trials were split, um, into two very shortly before my trial, which I think was intentional to try to screw it up. It was going to be a joint trial until up to then. Um, and the slimy bastards with the help of slimy bastard, Michael Bailson, the judge split it up. And then my trial went first. The attorneys that, that Tessa got, one of them I referred to as worm tongue um, from Lord of the Rings, because what she did constantly was undermine and sabotage things to try to make Tessa surrender and confess guilt and give up. It's like, great, we're paying them to tell you to give up. Like, uh, lovely. That's awesome representation. And that's what politicians always do to their quote-unquote constituents. And they did it when the, the Constitution was happening. And then, so... At the time of the revolution and before you get people like Thomas Paine and Patrick Henry, who I still think they were either really close to being anarchists or were closet anarchists, one or both of them. And they didn't play that game. They were not at all. So put me in charge. They were like, if you want freedom, you have to shoot some of these bastards because there's, they're not going to give up any other way. But then you get politicians, um, mainly the Federalists when it came to the, the Constitution, but even the Anti-Federalists, you know, they, I wouldn't even trust most of them to not be trying to position themselves for power. And, but the Federalists were just obvious, like, well, now we need a pro-freedom government. It'll be really good. It'll be nicer than a king, but it needs to have enough power to manage things because under these Articles of Confederation, there are lots of problems. So give me power and I'll fix them. Just already there's these freeloading, opportunistic, slimy sociopaths trying to empower themselves, and it works. And people cheer for them. Rah, rah, rah. This guy, really, he's on our side. If he wants political power, he is not on your side. Because if he wants political power, that means he wants the ability to dominate you. If somebody is trying to get the ability to dominate you, he's not doing it for your benefit. Duh. I've said that a million times, but it's worth <laughs> saying a million more. Uh, because that just doesn't occur to people. Yeah, I'm going to vote for him. He's, he'll be our voice as we send him off to be part of a gang that violently dominates and extorts us. Yeah, and represents us. We represent the people by bossing them around and threatening them with violence and stealing their stuff. And so the lie just keeps going because people, and people get all huffy if you point it out too, um, especially minarchists. Well, at least it's a step in the right direction. No, it's not. It's a lie in the right direction to keep you to be a compliant slave because you think somebody in the system gives a crap what you want. You think they're fighting for justice or whatever else. And so instead of actually disobeying and resisting, you put your faith in putting a new guy on the throne, despite the fact that that never freaking works. And so it's, you know, it's, I feel like a party booper because I totally am. But whenever people, whenever people like go get all gung ho about some politician who, yeah, well, he's not an anarchist, but he really, he criticizes this and he criticizes that and it's awesome and yeah, there's some hope. And it's so frustrating. And in part, it's so frustrating because I remember doing that myself. And now I'm embarrassed and, you know, annoyed and mad that I ever fell for that BS. And I was all thrilled to death in 1994 when the liberals lost the House and the Senate to a bunch of new Republic, conservative Republicans, not even just normal Republicans, but conservative Republicans that were for limited government, pro-freedom, and blah, blah, blah. This is a step in the right direction. I totally believe that. And I was all happy about the win. It was like, this is amazing. At long last, things are turning in the right direction. Were they? Nope. And I was tricked into wasting lots of my time and energy cheering for something utterly pointless that, that won. Like, my guys won, and it was utterly pointless. So it's not even just, you know, politics is pointless because you're going to lose. Politics is pointless because whether you win or lose, you lose. 
your candidate can win, you're still a freaking subject. And so to watch people fall for this stuff for the billionth time in a row, it's just sort of gross. And again, it, it's because they don't, they can't think like a sociopath. And, and not all, you know, some politicians aren't all the way sociopaths. They're just opportunistic, slimy crooks. Um, but they don't, you know, normal people don't want to imagine that about someone saying, vote for me and I'll represent your interests and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you go do that so I don't have to myself. So rah, rah, rah. And they don't want to consider the possibility that he didn't give a crap about you. He's doing this to trick you into giving him power. And that's all. The moment he gets there, his concerns are his own power. And he'll keep up the show if he wants to stay in that office longer. He'll keep up the show that I care what you want. And I, rah, rah, rah. and it's never true. It's impossible for it to be true. Because like I said, you can't serve. It's utterly impossible to serve somebody by violently dominating them and stealing their money. And so for this politician to say, this is an outrage, this is a horrible injustice, by the way, just go along with it, don't resist, because that's going too far. That's just the ultimate statist propaganda. Because the guy who comes out and says, do as you're told, we don't care what you think, we don't care what's good for you, obey or else. That state prop, statist propaganda sucks because nobody goes rah, rah, rah for it. They all go, you suck, you're my enemy, you're my oppressor, I'm going to do whatever I can to kick your ass and get out from under your control. Nobody cheers for that, ever. But if you come along and say, I'm representing you, and if you give me the power, I will protect you from all the blah, 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 blah. That's how Mao got into power, and Stalin, and Lenin, and Hitler, and Pol Pot. and It's always that, that's always the sales pitch of it's going to benefit you to empower me. And never in the history of the world has it been true. And so it's just, you know, I have to feel like it's my job to be a party pooper whenever anybody sort of, like, they stray away from self-ownership and non-aggression because they think they see, like, a spark of hope somewhere inside the system, inside the process. Well, this guy... And the fact that people are doing it for Trump, good Lord, you know, that you have, uh, you have even supposed voluntarists like saying nice things about Trump. Oh, holy crap. Like that's not even, you're falling for not even a remotely good sales pitch. Like at least to somebody who doesn't understand the intricacies of how political deception and manipulation works. The, this congressman I was just talking about, at least he should be persuasive to people because he sounds like he's totally being in favor of the people and against the bureaucracy. Even though he'll throw in the, but they went too far by not bowing and obeying. But Trump, really? That sounds like a pro-freedom message to you? Holy crap. So, and it's, you know, I know people get gung-ho and they get all hopeful and... You know, I don't just mess with people's hopes just because I'm a, you know, sadistic bastard. I mess with their hopes when the hopes are totally freaking misguided. And they always are if you're hoping that a political candidate or a party is going to save the day. Um, and I would almost make an exception for Ron Paul, except I won't make an exception for Ron Paul because Ron Paul doesn't make an exception for Ron Paul. I loved his closing remarks where he admitted that, hey, legislatively, I got nothing done the whole time I was here. But what matters is the beliefs in the mind of the people. Um, and like if, you know, 17 miracles had occurred and he got elected, people would suddenly realize, oh, yeah, we don't have a king. We have a president. And by himself, he can't do anything positive. Like he could temporarily screw things up by firing people and, and stuff like that. But he can't, the president can't legislate anything and Congress can legislate stuff without his cooperation. A president can't repeal the income tax. He can't even introduce a bill. He can't do anything. He can say, Hey Congress, can you please repeal this? And they'll say, no. 
And so even if he won, people would find out, oh, the system doesn't really allow for the system to be used in favor of freedom. Now, by way of executive orders and all sorts of evil crap and warmongering, president can do a certain amount of evil crap on his own, but he can't make freedom happen on his own. Um, the most he could do is sort of like botch things up temporarily and run away, um, which some of you might recognize that notion. Um, but so it's just, you know, I feel like I'm a, being a party pooper, but I have to be a party pooper whenever somebody thinks, well, electing this guy is a step in the right direction. You know, I stand with Rand. Then you're a friggin' idiot. Not only can't he do anything good, he doesn't want to do anything good. He wants the power. Well, he's going to repeal this. He couldn't repeal that. He couldn't do a freaking thing. And he's totally a statist. I just saw a thing on the, the View where it was talking about gun control. It made me want to throw up. Not what they were saying. I expect them to be stupid, emotional, doofus, collectivist authoritarians. Nobody needs an assault weapon. Ignorant morons. But uh, Rand Paul was the worst of all. Because he was pretending to be pro-Second Amendment... But his excuses were these timid, lily-livered, well, there's a Second Amendment. We, we can't set the precedent that we can just ignore the Bill of Rights. And we can work together to decide reasonable laws. Uh, instead of saying, the Second Amendment is so the people can shoot the fucking government. That's why it's there. That's, they said that's why it's there. So the people retain the ability to violently resist their own goddamn ruling class. That's why people need assault rifles, to shoot feds. That was the intent to begin with. They weren't secretive about it at all. And it's just as true now as it was then, only more so because now people are way more threatened. Their freedom, their liberty, their lives are way more threatened by the federal government than when the Second Amendment was written, than when this whole fiasco started. But instead of daring to say that, Every politician, you know, Rand and a bazillion others that pretend to be for the Second Amendment, it's like, well, I'm not saying I support violent resistance to government, but, uh, well, then you don't even know what the Second Amendment's for, and you're just supporting slavery. Because what's the alternative? The alternative is to say, we need to keep these guns to defend ourselves, except we should never defend ourselves against the government because that would make us cop killers and, and treasonous lawbreakers. And we can't be that, but we should have our guns and wave them around and go ooga ooga until government says, no, we, we command you to put them down. And then what? Then what do you do? Mr. NRA, big law enforcement supporting, pretend Second Amendment supporting guy? Then what? You either shoot cops or you let yourself be enslaved. When tyranny comes, that's been the choice about a billion times in a row in human history. And if you're not willing to say the reason people should be armed is so they can shoot law enforcers, then you either don't know or don't dare to say what the purpose of the Second Amendment was. And of course, Second Amendment is just scribbles on paper. It doesn't make anything true. But it was... Um, the result of anti-federalists saying we don't nearly trust this monster that the Constitution is going to build and we want some assurances, uh, which weren't nearly enough, obviously. But one of them was you don't get to disarm the people ever. And now the entire argument in mainstream media is whether you need them for hunting and with, and, and then the technicality of, well, the Second Amendment protects it. Well, why? If you don't have the spine to say why it's there, then you're just sort of helping this stupid notion that, well, government can decide what's best for us. And if it decides it's best for us to be disarmed, well, then, of course, we should go along with that. You know, can you imagine a politician running for office who would say the reason for the Second Amendment is so people can shoot government. And because of that, I don't much care what legislation government passes. 
I'm not going to petition them to not pass this gun control. I'm going to tell the people, if the government passes this gun control and tries to take your guns, shoot them. That's what the fucking thing is for. It's so you retain the ability to shoot them. If you're going to hand over your guns because they said, no, you have to, why the fuck did you have them to begin with? We have the guns so we can defend ourselves as long as the tyrants give us permission to defend ourselves against them. And the fact that nowhere in mainstream media does anybody have the spine to talk about this, even the supposed Second Amendment advocates always water it down and have these wussy ass explanations instead of, and, and you know, and they, they'll even be asked because the leftist reporters always know they're going to back down. Well, what if the law is passed? Will you comply with it? Well, yeah, but we're going to petition and whine a whole lot. Instead of saying, no, the whole point of the frickin' Second Amendment is if these laws are passed, we're not going to give them over. And if they try to take them, we're going to shoot them. That was the intent. That's the whole frickin' point. What's the point of the Second Amendment if the government is allowed to say, hand them over, and you have to hand them over. You're not allowed to resist. But nobody inside the system, no politician is going to dare to say that. Nobody in the mainstream media is going to dare to say that. So the entire discussion is, how much are we going to kiss their ass before we bow and do whatever they say? Because that's the only other alternative. Either at some point you have the right to resist, or at no point you have the right to resist. The entire mainstream political discussion assumes, Democrat, Republican, left, right, assumes that at no point is it actually okay to shoot the quote-unquote law enforcers as long as the evil that they're doing was legislated first, which makes that whole discussion pro-slavery because it's all reinforcing the bogus notion that, well, you can never resist the master. The rulers, the ruling class, authority, that's the horrible, that's criminal, that's treasonous. You can beg a whole bunch of different ways and whine a whole bunch of different ways. And that, to have that be a discussion as if that's a choice, you know, well, which collection of beliefs do you want to say you believe in before you bow and do whatever the rulers tell you to? Like, that's not anything. It's like, slaves having a debate over what they hope the master will do, and then they all agree, well, of course, we'll do whatever the master says. But this group over here wants him to tell us we can work less, and this group over here wants him to not whip us quite as hard. So we'll debate amongst ourselves, and then whatever the master does, we'll put up with. Well, then you're not accomplishing a freaking thing. You're reinforcing your own slavery your own mental slavery, which always leads to physical slavery. So the whole lukewarm work within the system, political spin manipulation thing just annoys the crap out of me, as you can tell. Hey, at least this turned into an actual rant. I was actually ranting for a minute there because it pisses me off that so few people dare to talk about this. You have cops murdering people, openly murdering unarmed people in the street. And yet a lot of the country still pees itself when I make a video called When Should You Shoot a Cop? Kelly Thompson, when that is happening, that's when you should wipe those fuckers out. If I had an AR-15 with a 30-round clip and I was there and I saw them, every one of those fuckers would have died except Kelly Thomas. He would still be alive. That's when you shoot a cop. When they're openly committing murder, you kill them. And the fact that only a tiny percentage of the population dares to say that, as bleeding obvious as it is, open a fucking history book. You need a few hundred million more people to die before you figure out the possibility that maybe at some point you have to resist these assholes? God, people are so freaking enslaved, including the Republicans, including most of the so-called ranchers and most of the conservatives. And most people who say they're in favor of the Second Amendment. Well, what if the law was... Well, we're not advocating anything illegal. Then you freaking lose. If you will never break the law, in other words, if you will never disobey the politicians or resist their thugs, you already lost. 
you're already 100% a slave in your own head. And it doesn't matter that you have guns because you just admitted you're never going to use them against your oppressors. So whoop the frickin' do. People need the means and the willingness to resist aggression if they're going to be free. And most of the people who have the means to do it, who own firearms, don't have the willingness at any point to resist. And that's why I asked the question, when should you shoot a cop? Where is your line? At what point will you actually resist? And for most people, the honest answer is, I never will. I'll hand over my guns, I'll grovel, I'll walk into a concentration camp, whatever. Just like most people have done throughout most of the world, throughout most of history, and been exterminated because of it. <sighs> Alrighty. <laughs> so, that turned into an actual rant. Holy smokes. Alrighty. So, I guess that is my actual rant for today. <laughs>